It's a problem which many cyclists are affected by. A numbness in the groin area after a prolonged period spent sat in the saddle. It can happen to new cyclists and also those that have been riding for many years. Now it can severely reduce the enjoyment of riding a bike, but it can also be quite dangerous if you choose to ignore it. So how do you go about preventing it? Well, we're gonna go through a few tips in this video, but firstly, let's explain exactly what it is. Now the official term for this discomfort is perennial discomfort, also known as numb nuts, but it's more uncouth people of the world that would refer to it as that. Now effectively, just like a lot of other numbness that you might experience in your body through your lifetime, it's caused by a lack of blood flow to that particular area. So in this case, prolonged periods spent sat in the saddle can compress the nerves and blood cells in that area. Now, if you choose to ignore it and it goes untreated, it can lead to something called Alcock syndrome, which can also be known as, I'm never going to remember this, pedendal nerve entrapment syndrome. Definitely sounds like something that you don't want to get, so let's have a look at a few things you can do to make sure that you don't ever get it. Now, the first thing to look at, fairly obviously, is the saddle upon which you are perched. Now, saddles are a very personal thing. You know, a shape which suits one person won't necessarily suit the next person, just like, in fact, any item of clothing which comes in different sizes. Now, what this means, unfortunately, is that experimenting with different saddles can become quite expensive if you buy them each time. So, if at all possible, try to borrow one per week, either from a friend or maybe a local bike shop, until you find the right one for you. And I can say from personal experience that when you do find that right shaped saddle, it makes an enormous difference to the comfort of your riding. It's worth bearing in mind though that it is the shape of the saddle generally which makes the most difference to comfort. So don't be fooled into thinking that the biggest, softest, comfiest looking saddle is going to be the most comfortable. Now you could also try experimenting with a saddle that has a cutout down the middle or indeed some kind of channel. Now these are designed so that the majority of your body weight there is perched upon the two sit bones either side as opposed to the soft tissue in the middle. This allows more blood flow through that critical area. And one more thing to consider is that women, in general, will have sit bones that sit slightly farther apart than men. But the good news is there are plenty of women-specific saddles on the market that take this into account. The next thing to look at is where you're actually sitting on the saddle when you're out riding. Now you should be perched on the slightly wider part here towards the back. And if you're perching yourself further forwards, that could be your problem. So if this is you, then try consciously when you're out riding, shimmying back and see if that makes a difference to you. Although if you're struggling to do this, then you could always try pushing your saddle forwards ever so slightly on the rails by a centimetre or so. And again, that could make the difference. Now you should also consider the angle of your saddle. In general, it should be almost perfectly horizontal. The exception to this is if you've got some very low bars at the front end, i.e. quite a large saddle to bar drop. In this instance, you could try experimenting with having your saddle angled ever so slightly with the nose downwards. Not too much though, otherwise then the tendency will be for you to slip forward and once again, you'll be sat on the wrong part of the saddle. Now the last thing to consider is your saddle height. If you have it too high, then you're gonna to have to rub from side to side every time you pedal. So if you think the saddle's too high, just put it down ever so slightly and that could be what works for you. Now, finally, you want to make sure that when you're out riding, you get out of the saddle for 15 to 20 seconds every 15 or 20 minutes. This is actually one of the reasons why people find that they get this discomfort more on an indoor trainer when, than when they're out riding, because an indoor trainer, you tend to stay seated in the saddle. Just getting out of the saddle for 15 to 20 seconds should get the blood flowing again, and it could relieve the discomfort. Next up, it almost goes without saying, but riding with a specific pair of cycling shorts with a chamois insert like this will almost always make your riding more comfortable. But do bear in mind that over time they do wear out and get more compressed. So if you're still using the same pair of shorts that you've done thousands and thousands of kilometers on, it might be time to invest in a new pair. And talking of equipment, investing in some bigger tires with a larger volume can also really help the comfort whilst you're out riding. You'll be able to run them at a lower pressure, which will mean that your tires absorb more of the bumps and vibration from the road so that your undercarriage doesn't have to. Finally, it's a really good idea to make sure that you raise yourself off the saddle slightly before anything like a speed bump or maybe a pothole which you can't avoid. If you stay seated in these situations, your saddle's just gonna slam against your body and that's not going to help things at all. So there you have a few pointers to try and help alleviate perennial discomfort. Firstly, make sure that you've got the right saddle for you. Secondly, make sure that your saddle is in the right place and that you're sitting in the right place of the saddle. Next, make sure you've got the right equipment that's going to make your riding as comfortable as possible. And lastly, make sure that you get out of the saddle occasionally, particularly at appropriate moments. 
Now it's worth saying also that with any of these things, just try doing them one at a time so that you can single out exactly which one has worked for you. Now we've got a couple more videos now which should help you as well. So just up there, we've got a video which shows you how to find your perfect saddle height. And just down there are a few tips on how to prevent saddle sores. And somewhere on the screen, you'll see a red GCN logo. Click on that and you'll be able to subscribe to the channel for free.